Hi, I'm Stuart DeHaro, and welcome to the first of what I hope will be many videos focusing on tips and projects for the machine shop. In this video, I'd like to show you a solution to a common problem and a really common setup. When you need to clamp a part on the mill table, it can rotate like this. Now nobody wants to indicate a part in square to the travel of the machine every single time this kind of job comes up. So instead, make yourself some pins that fit in the T-slots of the machine, and then bump your part up against it. This makes your part square to the T-slot, and therefore square to the travel of the table. Of course, you can also add a table stop to the end of the part to locate it in both axes so it doesn't slide back and forth. That's really handy for making multiple parts. Now this is a bridge port, so the T-slots are 5 eighths of an inch. But if you have a different machine, just make the pins to match your machine's T-slots. I just cut some pieces of 5 eighths turned ground and polished rod for the pin since it's very accurate on the diameter. Drill rod can work too, but in my experience it tends to be a little bit oversized. I cut two different lengths, the 2 inch ones you see here but also some 5 inch ones for parts that need to be blocked up higher off the table for one reason or another. The length isn't critical at all, and you can see the ends of the pins are just saw cut. I just put a bit of a chamfer on the end using a belt sander. Now if you want to get fancy, you can make your pins like this. The pin's also 2 inches long, but I've milled a 16th inch deep flat on one side to an inch and a half from the end and then a wrench flat on the opposite side so I can use a half inch wrench on it. Then you can just drop the pin into the T-slot and give it a quarter turn to tighten it up in the slot. My dimensions are based off of the depth of the T-slot and the width of the wrench plus a bit for clearance um, and I put the wrench flats in the middle of the part so they don't potentially interfere with the location of my part. My setup for making the pins is just a square 5C collet block. Now if you don't have a set of collet blocks you should really think about getting one. The set's only about fifty or sixty dollars and it comes with the square block as well as a hex block. And it also comes with rings for tightening the collets in the back and a cam lever, which is an alternative way of tightening them. Now, for the setup, I actually used a collet stop right there so that I could locate my part within the collet. And I also used a table stop so I could locate the block in the vise. This kept my x-axis location consistent for both cuts on both pieces. After the first cut, of course, you just take the collet block out and turn it 180 degrees and make your second cut. I hope this tip will help you out in your shop and hopefully you'll come back and watch my videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Now go to your shop and make some chips.